Hello, my name is Melissa Cardoza, and I work at the Mayor's Office of Housing and Community Development. This video will walk you through the steps for completing a rental application using Dahlia, the San Francisco Housing Portal, where you can find and apply for affordable rental and ownership opportunities. If you have not yet watched the video about Dahlia listings and the general overview about the website, please go back to start there. Also, if you have not yet created a Dahlia account, please go back to the homepage using housing.sfgov.org. Select sign up in the top right corner and create your account so you can come back to the application. Dahlia applications are available in the four city languages, English, Spanish, traditional Chinese, and Filipino. You will also note there is a checklist of the documents you will need to attach to your application. If you are not sure which document to have ready, we recommend that you please go back to the listing to review and have them ready to submit electronically before you begin working on your application. Let's begin. We're gonna first choose our language, English, we're going to read this section, which lets you know that about the documents that you need to have ready for upload. And it also lets you know that applications, no two applications can have the same household member, otherwise both applications will be disqualified from the lottery. And to make sure that all your statements are not fraudulent. Let's start with our name. We're gonna use the name test since this is a test application. We're gonna put in January 1st, 1990, and we're gonna put in an email. It's important to always put in your email and to make sure you have an email account because that's how leasing agents and sale agents will be contacting you when your number comes up in the lottery and it's time for them to assess your income and asset eligibility. Let's press next. Now we're gonna put in our phone number. Again, it's important to put all the phone numbers you have, all your contact information, so it's very easy for a housing counselor uh, I'm sorry, for, for a leasing agent or a sales agent to get a hold of you. Let us know the type of phone number that you are putting in, whether it's a cell or a, a landline. If it's a cell, then they will know that they can text you on that number. Of course, you can add any additional numbers that you have. Now we're going to put in our address. This is the address where you sleep at night, where you shelter at night. Um, it can be um, a temporary address if you're sleeping there at the time of this application, um, but it's very important that you put a specific address in because this is the section of the application that geocodes your address, address for neighborhood preference. So if neighborhood preference is part of this lottery, then there will be a geocoding function at this point to determine if you live in the neighborhood. If you have a different address uh, that you would like your mail to be sent to, a mailing address, you can add that here. Some folks have a PO box or prefer their mail to go to their parents' house and they can add their mailing address here and that's where the leasing agent or sale agent will uh, contact you through mail. Now let us know if you work in San Francisco. Um, you must work in San Francisco at least 75% of your working hours. And that means that if you're driving Uber or you're doing deliveries, 75% of the time that you're working must be in San Francisco to be eligible for this preference. And we're gonna click yes. Let's you know you need a supporting document a little bit later on. And we're gonna click, click next. Okay, this section just lets you know that the address is correct. 
And now we are on to the alternate contact. An alternate contact is always really helpful to attach to your application. This is someone that you trust, whether it's a family or friend, or case manager, housing counselor, social worker, a nurse that you might see often, anybody that you really trust to receive contact from the um, sales agent or leasing agent when it's time to lease up or when they need more information, they will be contacting you and your alternate contact. So it's someone that you trust and we're gonna click a case manager and then next and we're gonna put in their name And we're gonna put in their agency. And it's really important to put in an the agency in case they're no longer working there. Um, you can put in you know, um, San Francisco General Hospital, if it's a nurse that you see often at a clinic, um, any sort of social worker, any agency that helps you um, because if that um, case manager is no longer there, they'll contact the agency and I'm sure someone else will be assigned to your file or to your, to you. Next. Okay, so again, we need the contacts, alternate contacts, phone number, and email address. and mailing address if you have it, um, if all of those things are helpful. We're gonna skip over the mailing address right now and go to next. And now the application is asking you if you are living with anyone else in your household. So we're gonna add a household member to just show you how to do that. And this is a reminder that um, before you add anyone to your application to make sure that they are not on any other application for the same lottery. And if they are, they will be flagged and your both applications will be disqualified. So take some time to make sure that everyone in your household, if you're adding an adult child, you check in with them and you make sure that they're not on any other application. Okay, let's add a household member. We're gonna name them Test Two and put in their birthday, about 2-2-19-20. And then we are gonna say they live at the same address. They don't work in San Francisco. Let's say they're retired, so they're not working right now. And the relationship to you. This is a long list. We're going to add grandparent and then save the household member. So now you see there's two household members um, in the application. And we're done with adding household members and we're moving on. Um, this next section is about the accessibility features found in the unit. And if you need an accessibility feature, um, some units have special mobility um, impairment for mobility impaired folks. Um, there's, you know, larger hallways or for people who are vision or hearing impaired um, to make it a bit easier to live in that unit. And if you need one of those features, it's very important to let us know. This next section is regarding all different types of income other than wages. So if you have a voucher, if you have non-taxable SSI, SSDI, health support or workers' compensation benefits, if you have a rental subsidy through many of the different subsidy programs in San Francisco, either that are run through a government organization or through a nonprofit, please let us know. Just click yes. You will still need to make two times the rent um, of your portion of the um, what you pay after the subsidy. Now we're going to move into income. 
uh, for income, it is important to put the total gross pre-tax household income. Um, and so that is all of the income in your household before taxes are removed. So that's what gross income means. And we're gonna put um, $3,000. It's important to be accurate here um, because this is the section that is going to determine eligibility if you are within the minimum and the maximum for this specific lottery. So it's important to be accurate and um, letting us know your entire household income because um, if you put something too low or too high and then when we're leasing up, we find that you're over income, you will not be eligible for the property. So if, it if the system sends you a mess, gives you a message at this point and tells you that you're either over or under, it's important to go back to Dahlia and look for other listings that you may be eligible for. Let's click next, and now we're gonna do preferences. So the preferences are listed on the posting. There's various preferences for each project. And for some of the preferences, you will need to attach a document um, so that um, you sh to show eligibility for that preference. So let's get started. First, they're asking you if you live or work in San Francisco. We have already put a San Francisco address in. So yes, we live in San Francisco. And we're going to attach a document. This is. Um, a test and so we're going, just going to attach a document that we have saved on our computer but it's important to only attach a document from the eligibility list which is right here these are the eligible documents that we accept um, and we'll be looking at when it's time to lease up so make sure to um, put one of these documents in and make sure it's dated within 45 days of this application so within uh, 45 days prior to this application. So we're going to put in um, a document that we have saved on our computer. Okay, and that's um, attached perfectly and it says that it was attached today. And now we're gonna click Next. Now the um, application is gonna ask you if you have a certificate of preference or a displaced tenant housing preference certificate. If you don't know, you probably don't have that certificate. It's very specific to people who have experienced displacement um, either in the 1960s or 1970s because of redevelopment action, that's the Certificate of Preference Certificate, or who are currently re um, experiencing displacement because of an Ellis Act um, eviction, an owner move-in eviction, a fire in San Francisco, or expiring um, affordability restrictions on their unit, and they ha already have a certificate. So let's move on, we don't have a certificate. This is a demographic section. Please be as accurate as possible for your household and put in um, the demographics. They are kept private. Um, leasing agents and sale agents um, don't receive this information. It is just um, collect, the city collects this information to better serve everyone. So please put in your um, race and ethnicity that best describes you. And then you would put the languages spoken at home. This is very important too because um, when the leasing agents contact you, they'll know the languages spoken at home and they can um, either use language line or get some, um, another staff member who speaks that language who's bilingual to contact you. There's additional information in here. The first one's about gender. The next one is sexual orientation or sexual identity. 
And the next one is how you heard about the listing. Let us know how you found out, whether it was the email alert system or a flyer or a friend told you or a housing counselor. Um, we, this, this information is important to us um, and it helps us market each project. Then press next. Now is the time to review your application. It's pretty quick to complete an application. Um, and so you just want to review to make sure everything looks right. Your address, your phone number, your email was correctly keyed in. Your alternate contact information was also put in correctly. your income and your preferences look good and your de demographic information looks good. You can always edit if you need to. This is your last chance to edit because once you submit and confirm your application, um, there is no chance to go back and adjust it. So if you're not ready, if you haven't attached a document, if you're having trouble with that, you can contact a housing counselor and they can help you attach your document or figure out what document you need for the preference so you can save and come back later and when you save it will ask you to set up um, a Dahlia account which is always a good idea always so that's a great feature we have here but if it all looks good you can go ahead and confirm here are the terms of the application please read it because um, when you click the bottom, it means that you're signing off that you agree to all of this information. Um, it lets you know that um, you cannot commit fraud, that would be a disqualification. It lets you know that when you're contacted, you have five business days um, to um, get back to the, the agent, whether you're interested, that you can only submit one application for um, each household. Um, so all of that is right here. Please read it carefully. And after you read it, you can press submit. Okay, and here is your lottery number. So that is the lottery number. You can write it down if you like. You can take a screenshot of it, but it also goes to your email address and it's in your email. And if you have an account, it's saved in your account. So then you don't have to worry about it at all. You just sign in um, and check your lottery results and they'll be right there. Uh, what you can expect going forward is that um, it'll let you know when the lottery is held. Generally, you can check your results within an hour after the lottery. Um, and you can just go back to the listing and check your results by putting in that number, or you can go back to your account and check the results. Um, and then you do, not, um, you do not submit another application, of course, but if you have any questions, you can contact the leasing agent, which is their contact information is right there. And um, it again asks you if you want to create an account, which if you haven't, now is the time to do it. It saves all your information. And so the next time you complete an application, um, a lot of that information populates. Um, so it's much faster each time you complete it. Okay, and that's it. So thank you so much for joining us today. If you have any questions, please go back to housing.sfgov.org and contact our office. Thank you so much.